Welcome back to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. Uh, it's good to have you w- with us uh, this uh, Christmas uh, morning. And uh, if you're just joining us, we want to begin by offering you a gift. And that gift is a free subscription to our bi-monthly newsletter called What's New. Uh, it's a great resource. Uh, over 17,000 uh, folks have uh, told us so. Uh, and um, all you need to do is give us a call during the week at 952 nine two two twenty five hundred ask for Courtney you can start receiving uh, that free subscription uh, we put in there folks we uh, uh, at new concepts uh, teach uh, er- almost every month um, different webinars mm-hmm. that are that are free mm-hmm. uh, from uh, the accidental landlord and how mm-hmm. to uh, manage property to if you uh, live in a homeowners association and you're on the board how to be a good president how to read a financial statement mm-hmm. a lot of great stuff great information if you're a property owner uh, give us a call and start getting that subscription we also want to hear from you if you have an opinion or an idea or a question, 952-224-2668, and we'll discuss it on the show. Yes. Um, also, you can uh, give a, an email at uh, gene, G-E-N-E, at ncmgi.com, and uh, we would be happy to uh, take those uh, comments uh, and uh, be able to read them on the next week's show. Uh, well, we are uh, going to begin with this uh, new story here, and this is coming out of uh, Florida from the Sun Sentinel News, uh, dis- uh, dated December 19th. It says, is your association vulnerable to a frivolous age discrimination lawsuit? Uh, here is what took place, folks. There is an organization down in Florida called the Housing Opportunities Project for Excellence known as Hope. Okay. And uh, they called a press conference just last week, and they issued a press release, uh, and they said they have sued several real estate uh, agencies and condominium associations in the Broward County. The group announced that one of its goals was they wanted to remind folks that in the housing industry, you cannot discriminate against families and children. Hope was established uh, as uh, by a grant that they received from HUD originally in 1988, so they've been around for a while. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hope themselves uh, states that they believe that they're the only nonprofit fair housing organization in the Miami-Dade Broward County area currently engaged, and this is interesting. In this the, is their their mission, apparently. Yeah, the testing for fair housing law violations, uh, not uh, not uh, pursuing or investigating uh, a, a a claim, but they want to test. To me, Tony, this is this is something else. This is this is very close to entrapment, is it not? Because I've ex- yeah. been on the on the receiving end of these tests, and what they do is they start making phone calls, they start fishing around, they look at ads, they look at advertising, marketing, they start calling real estate agents or leasing mm-hmm. agents or site managers and asking leading questions, trying to lead people into saying something that they can construe as unfair housing, yeah, it, as violations of the Fair Housing Act. Now, it's one thing to just go about and to, uh, and to try and police and to look for it. And if you sure. find something, sure. to be able to call someone out on that. Sure. Uh, and uh, Lord knows, if you're involved in real estate or property management, Every couple of years, we are renewing a course in uh, agency and fair housing. We have to and take we have to take agency and fair housing every two years yes. for our license. It's the same class. <laughs> we take it every two years, right? And it tells us how to conduct business so that we are in compliance with fair housing. Now, I have to say this, Gene. I think more boards should get this training. Mm-hmm. I think more homeowners associations should take seriously the fair yeah. housing issues because they're becoming targets. And in this case, Hope also targeted some homeowners yeah, associations. Yeah, and, that, and, that's, and that's what happens here. Uh, the, the part that bothers me from the aspect of testing is it sounds like this is a group that wants to push new boundaries in new identification well, as uh, in something that is considered uh, 
discrimination that may not well, have I, been that before. does happen and I've, i i have a story to tell about that in this particular t- case hope is trying to find uh they're testing for a very very uh well accepted concept mm-hmm. of fair housing and that is you can't discriminate against families with children yeah. this isn't cutting new ground but what is new is that they sued some homeowner associations when they found that homes within the associations were being marketed for rent mm-hmm. and they said something something in the marketing that said children weren't allowed yeah. children under 12 weren't allowed anything like that yeah. raised a red flag for them and the interesting part here uh, in this article from the sun sentinel news is that in the case of at least at least now two of uh, the lawsuits last week named in the press release at the press conference None of the careful hope activities cited on their website actually took Mm -hmm. place. And what their mission was, that they would test for fair housing law violations, pursue enforcement of meritorious claims, and conduct fair housing education and outreach. So this article is saying they did none of that. Yes, and uh, and let's give an example of of what uh, we're talking about here. In uh, one particular case, one of the testers, her name is Alyssa Arnell, apparently visited several internet sites listing classifieds for unit rentals and found ads which had language, like you had said, Tony, stating children under 12 were not allowed to visit the uh, the property being advertised for lease. Now, that that statement would be discriminatory. That's right, under the Fair Housing Act. In the case of one of the associations, Ms. Arnell also located an age restriction dated from 1986 but un- and this is what where she had a big whoops here yeah she didn't uh, further search to find out that that 1986 restriction that was in the governing documents was removed by a further amendment in 2002 when the association did notice it and they took care of it promptly. Right. The article goes on to say, in fact, Hope did not even take the most basic steps to research this potential discrimination. A simple phone call to the association, which would have revealed that the unit marketed and being leased was being leased by the owner of the unit, not by the homeowners association. So naming the association in a lawsuit is completely wrong. Yes, they don't own that property. There's a an individual that owns that property. Yeah, and you're you're right. Um, and I don't know why there. I mean, uh, homeowner associations uh, make up a huge uh, percentage of the population of home ownership nowadays, and it's amazing how many people don't. Understand? They don't take. Care, don't they don't care the to. Basic they don't take the time to understand. It. They don't care to. Uh, you, the one thing that uh, bothers me. Tell me what you think here. Uh, don't you think that sometimes when some people are researching, uh, I think sometimes people are already excited and loaded for bear. Sure. And sometimes people are uh, look through it through a filter of you're guilty until proven exactly. innocent. That's Especially exactly right. when it comes to discrimination. That's right. People are, people are, well, and in this case, it's actually their mission to ferret out instances of discrimination. It's not, they're an organization. It's not that, that someone called them and said, hey, I tried to rent this house and they wouldn't let me because I had a, uh, an 11 year old. Yeah. They're setting it up so that someone pretends they're renting a house, mm-hmm. pretends they have someone under the age of 12, and tries to catch someone in the act of discrimination. Yeah. I think that's a very different scenario. Now, the person who wrote this article for the Sun Sentinel, they asked a great question mm-hmm. in, in, in there. They said, uh, I wonder what attempts did uh, this organization hope do to educate these boards and communities before suing them? Denouncing them denouncing in a them. highly public fashion. What a great point. That's a very good point. Are, are, are we out after a witch hunt or are we out after trying to educate people to try and uh, understand and have a greater sensitivity to the area of discrimination? That's right. She goes on to say that it, hope is hope unaware that associations who are sued like this must put their insurance carriers on notice and they risk possible repercussions as a result of this frivolous, 
unsupported yeah. a- accusation. It, it, it's unconscionable. It's irresponsible. Yeah, I, I mean, c- clearly they, these are people. I mean, yes, they have uh, a good mandate, and I think, I think, I think there's uh, quite a few people, I in I the United States that really want uh, for things to be fair. That's they, right. But they Gene, don't want discrimination. Is to it place. really the right approach to establish an agency that goes searching for this stuff? Yeah. I, I don't know if I agree with that. Certainly, have an agency that helps people who have been victims of this issue. All right, help mm-hmm. them figure out if they were discriminated against and if they have a cause for action. But we've we <laughs> it, it makes it makes me wonder if you're talking about an organization now that's funded by the government. That's what this hope is. They're, and, and, they're funded by here, HUD. Here's what you have to do. They were funded do. by a grant from HUD. Here, here's the problem or issue that I have, and that is when you have someone who uh, is receiving funding from someone else uh, that. Uh, sets up a relationship where you have to prove your worth and value to continue on. There you go. You have they have to prove to HUD that they're doing and something. And so and so now uh it would be wonderful, wouldn't it, to have a government agency that said, "We've done our work. We're done. <laughs> We're going to stop. We're closing up no shop." More, yeah, we don't need any more. But <laughs> oh, no, that geez. doesn't that doesn't take place. It never happens. No, it doesn't. We're <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I mean, it has happened with uh, polio, right? I mean, sure, sure, but know? that's because someone got to make a gazillion dollars on the no, vaccine. No, he didn't. Well, maybe no. not Jonas Salk, but somebody got to make a gazillion he gave, dollars. He gave. <laughs> did you know that he <laughs> gave it free? Because he oh, said, he said something like that. He said is uh, he said is not. Uh, he said, "Is not to be kept, but he said, is is for mankind or for profit. It's for the betterment of mankind." Did, wow! And, did you know the United States? And this is a little trivial uh, fact, just because I'm a former uh, history, history teacher. teacher. Yes. yes, they were going to. And that was such an important. That was such an important thing that took place. They were going to. They were going to make a uh, a Jonas Salk Day. Because wow. of that, and because wow. of uh, because of we uh, should him be celebrating polio. that. Yeah. we should be celebrating that kind People of like that. approach. But yes, yes uh, but uh, you're you're so right. We've got to take a break, but there's so much more that we want to say on this issue. We've got uh, uh, even uh, some uh, stories that are taking place right here in our own Twin Cities mm-hmm. area. We're going to be talking with the property manager after these messages about. Uh, Age discrimination lawsuits here in the Twin Cities. More after these messages.